company, maybe it's Glassdoor or any place you want to search, go search, evaluate whether this is a good team or not. Because when you're joining a good team, you will survive for a longer period of time. And the next thing is dream company versus dream team. Very important factor here is that people generally strive for a dream company. Like, oh, I want to join Microsoft, my life is sorted. But when they fire, they fire in chunks. So it's only the dream company, uh, dream team, which will help you to sus uh, sus uh, what you sustain in that particular team for a longer period of time because group teams actually work together. And dream team is basically enabling each other in terms of uh, uh, one person's capability are synergized with another person's capability and that becomes a dream team which can make, make billion com uh, billion dollar companies. And easy versus dynamic. Today I'm taking a session one hour long, right? Uh, it's easy, but what to speak, right? So I have to retrospect. Either, whether I have to be dynamic or I have to read a, new, uh, read a paper, uh, it all depends upon my style of, uh, or let's say individual's style of delivering anything. So check whether you are easy person who believes in following an easy route. So it's like once you crack a good uh, examination and you join, you have joined a government department, people say it is easy. But in a other world, in more practical world where there's a fear of job loss, where there is a fear of uh, showcasing yourself as a better person than others, and also a team player, you are evaluated at, at each and every aspect, you have to be dynamic. So choice is yours. If it is an easy job or it's a dynamic job, retrospect yourself, whether what kind of a personality you are. So why you should hunt for a good boss? Uh, this is the third time I'm repeating that good boss is very important, good team is very important because the main problem is not with the company. The main problem is with the boss. So before you join, before you apply, look out for opportunities where you can evaluate the credibility of that particular boss and take a calculated decision. And uh, most of the people I see here is, are missing out on global applications. There are so many opportunities in the global world, uh, right? And you should explore ways to apply globally. So difference between a good subordinate and an agree boss here is that a good subordinate, right, is actually is a yes man. He's always or she's always a yes man. And an angry boss is, he's just, he feels that he's at the top and he's not creating conducive environment for the subordinates to perform well or better than them. Right. So, for example, let's uh, evaluate myself here at this point of time. So, currently, I'm holding three, four companies. Uh, if uh, there are so many people who are better than me, if I'm not going to support them, ultimately my team will weaken. So, it's not a dream team for me. Even if I'm a good boss, but if it is my subordinates are not uh, getting an opportunity to perform, it is going to make more issues. Now, why am I saying all these things? At this point of time, you have not joined a corporate, you have yet to find a job, you have yet to even make a resume, and you have yet to uh, uh, pass through your one year or two years at FIB. So why this thing comes into picture at this point of time? Because it's a management study. It's simple. You are studying a management. You should know from the scratch, from step one, that what needs to be done, how to negotiate well, how to evaluate people, how to actually create a conducive environment and don't be a fighter. Make fighters who can fight for you. So that become, that makes you leader. One important, oh, okay. So in, uh, in my two years at FIB, I learned lots of concepts. One thing which I learned here is uh, using theory into the practical world. Look at this presentation, this, this particular slide, very, thoroughly, right? And see, where do you fall? You will see that, number one, reciprocity. People are likely to return the favor, so help others. Consistency, people rarely like change and prefer consistency. So how will you create more conducive environment? 
to build that consistency. Social influence, people often follow the herd. Okay, let's go for this particular course, let's go for this particular uh, class, or let's go for this particular company and so on. So you know that people get influenced. Authority and obedience, people tend to submit authority. Whosoever is intelligent, whosoever is projected as a leader in terms of strong voice and everything, they think that, oh, people res start respecting them. Authority and obedience. Pe whosoever can actually negotiate well can get more things done from the same set of people. A person who doesn't have a good negotiation skills, oh, okay, he fails, even though he's the smartest guy. Or the girl, liking. So people are more easily persuaded by those they like. So you have to evaluate what are the likings of that group of people or an individual, right? What motivates them? So you can use this technique and understanding what, are, what do they like? So ask questions to your colleagues, uh, ask questions to the interviewer. That sir, what makes, you, what makes you stay in that company for so long? Why should I join your company? What makes your company better one? So when you ask these questions during the interview round, people tend to reply you in a positive manner and they feel that, oh, they get the opportunity to speak. Lacking, people inevitably view something that is rare as more valuable. So there are 141 people now. What makes them different? So every individual, if is saying the same thing over and over again, how will, you do, how will a hiring manager do differentiate? So don't follow a standard rule but create your own rules and see what works for you as an individual because every personality is different. You cannot have uh, 20 Abdul Kalams or 20 Prime Ministers. You only have one person who will sit at that, on that seat for five years. So what makes him sit there on that seat? It's the differentiation factor. And seventh important factor is people are more likely to, to be influenced by others if they strongly identify with them. So that makes that, uh, so you have to understand, you have to be a storyteller. So one thing is, what are the stories available in the market? Learn a lot of stories and then start sharing those stories and connect with that person, that hiring person or your partners or your, or your colleagues or your or fellow students. Connect and be, create a unity of thoughts. And this is one of the reasons why five roomies of facebook each individual earn, has a net worth of nearly four billion dollars some people are at the top level 28 billion some people have four billion five billion but everybody's a billionaire because you have to identify the uniqueness blue leadership is so important at this point of time at this hour that everybody strives for uh, of becoming a blue leadership. Uh, but in practical sense, when you start Thank your you career, sir. yeah, when you start your career. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, all right. So when you start your career, right, uh, you will feel, you will find a lot of people with different kind of leadership. Some people are stuck with the white, green, or red, or black. But strive for becoming plus finding a person who is a blue leadership. So blue leadership, the only differentiation here is he's constructive, even if somebody fails, fumbles, he is, he is not presenting well, but they will always find a good reason for liking other people because they know that they can get more things done by convincing people. So they have to find a constructive way. Selflessness very important today we always say that okay compete 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 no always find a niche nobody's going to compete with you motivated they are always up for challenges they say that okay let's do it so there are two ways uh, of thinking here one is let me create a conducive environment where not just one, but 20 people from the same batch gets hired in one company. Instead of thinking that, okay, two people have got hired and I'm done. So the practical sense here is that when you motivate everybody, when you educate everybody, when you say that, okay, these are the niche areas of your personality and go 
convince the one hiring manager who has the potential to hire 20 people, all these 20 people will get hired. But if you don't assess the hiring manager's potential to hire the number of people, right, you miss out on these aspects. So this is one important aspect that we all have to feel motivated, motivate others, find their niche, tell them what is your niche, and then this way everybody gets hired. Everybody gets positioned well. And this is one of the reasons why Howard University, why uh, other universities are, uh, are regarded, because everybody in, in the student network actually supports each other. They understand who's who, what they do, what they can do, what they cannot do. And when you know that this person cannot do that thing, so you don't give them that task. You give them what he can do. So this way, uh, this is one of the reasons why even in your classes you will see, and you have been seeing that there are group discussions and there are group teams. The teams are made to actually motivate each other, find who, who can do what, and use their practical understanding of that subject and what they like about that subject or what they can actually deliver on that subject, combine it together and present it well. So this way, uh, team delivers. And then individually, you can take the credit. People oriented, uh, focus your energies on people because uh, we are all surrounded by people. Uh, who hires you is a person, who fires you is also a person, who rehires you is also a person, who pings you, whom you ping is a person. So be a people oriented person and self-realized. Self-realization is basically the same retrospection. Understand yourself better. One of the theories, right? Uh, so Baldin Steam Rose, where, where I also use this, technology, this particular theory in my real life to actually manage these companies because I know uh, one person can be used for another company, although uh, both the companies are working in a different domain. So I need to know what kind of a challenges I can pose to that person. Similarly, in your life, you have to understand what kind of a challenges I can pose to my other colleagues, right? So that when the challenge, challenge uh, standard increases, you all are at the highest level. So how will you say that uh, to an interviewer uh, that how you can reshape the entire, just give me a second. Okay, so how you can actually uh, reshape uh, the entire, uh, what you call exactly. So the word is how you can persona of your, uh, of your, of yourself. So you have to, so there are shapers who actually challenges the team to achieve objective. Here, the shaper is basically your teachers respect them because they are shaping you and your personality. So implementers put ideas into action. So you as an individual can, are given tasks to implement your ideas into practical examples. So you do lots of tasks on a daily basis or a weekly basis. So these things actually nurture you, build you, you build your personality. And the completer ensures through timely completion. You will always find somebody who is very weak in, exec uh, in, in actually doing it by himself or herself. But he, everybody listens to them. He is the completer, she is the completer. So they are the leaders. Uh, coordinator, act as a chairperson. So you always need a person uh, who can coordinate your activities, who can actually manage and whom you can trust. Uh, there are people, resource investigator, explore outside opportunities. People who break the rule in terms of not just the rules, but they find, seek out new opportunities for expansion. So for example, today, if you are applying for, so let's say you are a finance person, you're doing an MBA in finance. Suddenly you get an opportunity uh, to lead a marketing team. Will you do it or will you not? It all depends upon your study of yourself, whether you can deliver, whether you're good at that thing. You might be spending 20 years of your life doing wrong things, but just one click, just one retrospection will enable you to explore outside opportunities and find that niche which you're good at. So team worker, always be cooperative to each other. The best person is uh, who is approached by others freely. And most of the time, that is eventually going to be the leader of the future. And then you have 
plant, present new ideas and approaches. Uh, no idea is a bad idea till the time it, the time is right. So if you launch uh, Facebook 20 years back, it will not be a success because internet penetration was not there. Today, if you launch anything, yeah, it, penetration is high. So you have to evaluate the market and launch your product. So store your ideas, keep on developing those ideas and only present them when it is relevant. So that is what you have to do. SWOT, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. This is the practical life. Similarly, the most important factor here is how you, how you make your resume. If you follow the same standard of making a resume, right? Which, which is publicly available information and you're not creating any niche and every resume looks the same in the hands of hiring manager. He only spends four to five seconds these days because he has to evaluate. He thinks, okay, everybody is the same on the same scale, but how will, what will make you different, right? So you have to see that how you can actually do better things. So keep on innovating, do practical stuff and explain how what you have achieved uh, in your resume so that your resume is little uh, uh, lucrative in the eyes of the hiring manager. So never miss a class in terms of where you get the opportunity to implement your ideas. Specialist. A specialist is a person who gives you, okay. Uh, all right. So specialist is a person uh, who provides specialized skills. So when I uh, when Pratyusha told uh, you guys that I'm a market expert, a Google Analytics expert, uh, okay, I did this because I knew that without doing it, I'm not an authorized person to speak about it. So I have to find a specialization. That is why you're doing a practical course, MBA, right? So that you can actually tell that I have gone through all these studies and this makes me different than others. And I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm a learned person. So that makes you a specialized skill, skilled, uh, what you call personality, monitor, analyze the options. Uh, everybody has an option, right? Uh, whether you get one job or two jobs, or you have no option at all, even in that scenario, you always have an option because whether to opt for that opportunity or not is in your hands. So that is what the option is. Right, so either you wait or you find opportunity, whether it's in Delhi, Bangalore, UK, UK or US or anywhere in the world, you have to monitor your options and analyze them and keep a look, uh, keep looking for more and better opportunities. One thing which connects you to the real world is the human motivation and the organization motivation. So how do you connect? How will you convince an organization to hire you? See, I can give you one simple sentence that, okay, whenever somebody asks you to introduce yourself, you have to say this, or you have to write this kind of a resume. But this is not never gonna work for you because ultimately uh, you will see the trend, right? Who follows the standard practice? They are at the bottom layer. But whosoever is a disruptor, they are at the top, at, at, the, at least the middle level. And they are the ones who people, uh, who people listen. And then they are the ones who will be the leaders in the future. So a human motivation is survival, a job security. But for an organization, it's a financial sustainability. On the uh, human front, you have relationships. On the organization front, it's a social responsibility or social sustainability. So it has to be equilibrium, boys and girls, right? And everybody has to be in equal state. Everybody has to have be given, should be given the equal opportunity. And feeling of self-worth, organization sustainability. Transformation, structures sustainability. So here we can also talk about the business plans as well. Internal cohesion, cultural sustainability, and so on. So in the, the service network, global sustainability, if you see that on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, left-hand side is you, right-hand side is the organization. And it says this should be an eye-opener for you. This is not a simple theory, 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 because in reality, this is 
how you are calculated. What is your economic value added? Whatever you, so let's say 20 people have joined an organization, right? If your economic value addition is higher, right? As compared to others, other companies or competitors or the environment or the industry, a uh, company will give you more, what you call bonus incentives, what you call scaling up of the operations. So bigger opportunities for you. This is the reality of the investment stages of the company. Uh, every company who starts is a startup. So once uh, a company is established, even when once it is established, even Tata has almost 700 plus small startups they work with. Uh, in my life, I was part of the Times of India group where I handled 810 startups. Logic remains the same. Wherever you fit yourself, wherever you feel comfortable, join that startup or a company at that scale. So for example, Geo, five years back, nobody knew. Today, Geo is invested by Facebook as well. So what makes them different? Uh, a, com a person who has searched Geo, who has evaluated that Geo has a potential and it has a backing of uh, uh, Reliance Group, and they applied for that job, they got it easily. And once you are part of that group or that legacy, you can actually keep on nurturing yourself, keep on growing. So today, whosoever has joined five, five years back, by just like in the, in the phase of development, which is the idea stage, seed stage, they are now one of the VPs or let's say marketing heads or IT heads of that company and they're leading it. So you have to find, find where the entry you is and then where you are comfortable, whether you want to go and join a company in the IPO stage. One example in my life, practical is Fine Labs. When I joined Fine Labs, it was in the proof of concept stage. And then by the time I left, it was MPO, management by objective. And then, by, and then in two years down the line, it will be an IPO. So it depends upon you, whether you want to join. And when I joined this company, Fine Labs, I left Times of India, a known brand in the world, to join a startup, which is unknown brand in the world. And now everybody knows about it. Whenever you go and swipe your card, okay, it's a Fine Labs boss machine. Uh, so one important thing, how will you negotiate uh, the salary? So some people at the starting stage itself will get lakhs and lakhs of rupees. Some people will still struggle after 10 years to earn that mark. So the practical comparison for any hiring manager is simple. What is your efficiency? Internal structure, work analysis. What is the job description, evaluation or certifications? And the second parameter is pay structure, market definitions. What, how market perceives that particular role. Surveys or studies, what survey says that whether this particular domain will grow or it will deteriorate? Or what are the guidelines for that company? Whether that company can hire at a one crore, two crore, or just five lakh or two lakh. Contribution, seniority based, performance based, according to the specifications. And the management, what is the management costs? What is cost center? So marketing is a cost center, finance is, uh, is a cost center, but sales is a profit center. And communication, changes, what phases they are going through. So all these things actually will help you to evaluate whether you have a negotiation power or not. Uh, without naming any company, let's say there is a pharmaceutical company, there is a a consulting company which actually provides services to that pharmaceutical company. Uh, you've got a joining letter from both of the companies. Which one will you join? So the question here is, if you join a pharmaceutical company, you will only work for that pharmaceutical company. But if you join a consulting group, you get the opportunity to learn about all these hundred pharmaceutical companies. And later on, you want to join that pharmaceutical company, you just have to give a call and you're better off than them, who is already working in that pharmaceutical company for 10 years. So this is one of the reasons even government of India is hiring people who have practical exposure 
in the industry directly making them a joint secretary. So Amber Dubey, who is a, who is a joint secretary uh, in the Ministry of Aviation, who is just launching the drones in India, right? Um, who has actually legalized drones in India, he joined from KPMG. And when he joined the KPMG, he was from OK School. And then he became the leader of, like everybody knows him now in the aviation industry. So choice is yours. You always have a choice. Seven habits of a highly effective people. A uh, very important aspect here is that you have to be proactive. So look at the bottom, dependence. When you join any company, you're dependent on other people. So you have to be proactive, sharpen your ax, sharpen your saw, and then keep on sharpening your skills. So whenever you join a company, always ensure that you practically learn the vocabulary of that company. Uh, when I say vocabulary, every company uses certain language, right? In terms of saying particular things. So you, the moment you join that company, learn the practical language and then be proactive in learning. Begin to go for the challenge. If you don't like it, search for another option. Don't wait. And then go for a private victory. Once you know that, okay, this is what I want to do. Okay, keep on doing it. Keep on doing it and innovating it. And put first things first. Start prioritizing the things. Mostly people fail in the initial careers because they, uh, they don't implement the time management. It's a very simple rule. Whenever you have to open the day, just write the tasks. At this point of time, I have to complete this. At this point of time, I have to complete that. And you will see, uh, for five days, you won't work. But on the sixth day, your performance is at the top and you will complete all the five day pending tasks on the sixth day because that is human nature. You have not, because at this point of time, you are still exploring yourself. So put things first, follow the time management. Once you will start doing it, you will become independent. So it's like learning a car. Uh, when for the, the moment you start uh, putting the first gear, right? You feel that, okay, I can learn. I can never learn the car, but after 15 days, subconsciously you are doing it. So you're independent. It is no longer a hindrance for you. You are just independent and you're doing it normally. Think win-win. So when you're driving a car, right? Similarly, you can actually take, take care of your family. You can go with your family or friends and so on. So you're thinking, okay, let's have fun. So this is the same situation. Whenever you are winning, make other people independent as well like you have followed all the channels, let them also follow the same channels. And tell everybody it's a public win. Your team is winning. Your team did that. We did that. Use the word we more often than I. Uh, first, understand then to be understood. It's important to understand the questions being asked. If you lose out on question, then you want to say actually saying something else Similar thing actually happens in your practical interviews. When somebody asks you, please help me understand. So first of all, uh, to put things in perspective, not every hiring manager is a good hiring manager. So if you eventually join in the HR function, you also have to learn how to ask good questions so that you can evaluate the candidate effectively. On the other side, for a candidate, they should also be conducive for the hiring manager to ask more relevant questions, good questions. He is not a God. She is not a good God. You have to actually give them an opportunity to ask good questions. So you have to frame your questions effectively, answers effectively, which result in more uh, better questions. First understand, then to be understood. Always understand this perspective. Understand the questions. Listen to people and then answer. Six, achieve synergy. Uh, you, you will often see that the word synergy being used in all the terms, right? But when it comes to firing you or somebody else, we will always take a challenge. No, I will not, uh, I'm better than the other person. But in reality, you could have actually sat together and created a business model for the company and safeguarded both of you. This is what we did. Uh, you all know that pandemic situation is there. On 25th of March, uh, we launched Ozo.life in just one day. We registered the company. 
uh, my team of five people, we registered the company, we listed ourselves. Today, everybody knows us. I'm a part of the DCGI group, I'm part of the ICMR council, I'm part of the advisory council and so on. So all these things happened in 45 days. Uh, it all started because we faced pandemic and we started uh, losing money and we wanted to fire 70% of people, but we came up with a solution. Why not enter into a medical sphere and let's donate, let's actually start the process uh, of uh, entering into medical sector and, and let's see, evaluate whether we can earn money out of that. So today, yes, we have second trend coming up. Interdependence is the main important factor where you are dependent on each other for practical success. So my team today is taking care of one company, another company, and another company. So three companies, same team. This is called interdependence and three practical different business domains altogether. Stage gate model. It's very simple, actually. First, examine the situation. Write that what your situation, what, what situation you are in. Develop the solutions, test and validate, and finalize market launch and review. So this basically is a product launch model. Apply yourself at this point of time. Whenever you're launching yourself in the market, right, you have to examine your options which are available. Uh, ever since uh, this particular emailer has been sent to all you, all these uh, participants, 139 participants who have joined us today, uh, almost eight to nine people have already approached me on the LinkedIn, so I know their names. This is your initial examination. And the second thing is whether I get whether they are making a conversation so conducive that I visit their profile. So I know what they have done, what college they have they belong to, what they are planning to do, whether I need them or I don't need them, and so on. And development. So you start nurturing your relationships, you start saying hello and any other things in terms of sharing the insights and other things, asking for the insights, uh, indirectly promoting each other, and so on, because it's a synergy and test and validate. See whether that particular alumni is going to help you in practical sense or not. If that person is not going to help you or is not in a position to help you, it's important to create that people-centric approach, but don't bombard him with, sir, I want a job, because nobody can give you a job till the time they have the opening in their company. So simple practical solution is test, validate, move on and finalize. So once you get the opportunity, stick to that and then follow the growth path. So whenever you join a company, you're technically a disruptor, right? Because you have lots of ideas. You are uh, trying to reestablish the entire e ecosystem because you heard me from almost one hour and you are overly motivated saying, okay, I want to disrupt this company. I want to create new ideas. No, don't do that. It, because disruption takes a lot of time to get adapted. Logic is create an environment where everybody starts adapting it. So today, lots of people use Geo because it was free. So adaption model, and then people are now paying for it. That's their revenue model. Because once you get hold of the enough number of people who understand your system, then they will automatically pay for your subscription. Same is the logic for the Zoom. One of my friend is an investor in the Zoom. I'm using Zoom for the very first time, right? And when he told me that Zoom is a $8 billion valuation company and so on, I was shocked, I was surprised. Then I realized, okay, this is an opportunity. Let's use it and then use it for the advantage of each other. Although I'm joking, I'm not using it for the first time. This is the platform we use. Organization, organizational uh, configuration at the bottom right operational core is there which pulls you towards professionalism and there is a techno structure there's a sports staff there's a middle management and division into independent units and upper management it's very easy graph but can you see on the left and the right hand side pull towards rationalization pull towards collaboration 
at the top, when, whenever you reach at the top, you will be pulled by through two forces, rationalize or collaboration. So you, that is one of the reasons. If you're stuck somewhere where there is a negative force, uh, you will be joining a company which is a bad team, bad company, even though big name, and they will shut their shops. And so many names I can utter here. So one important aspect is you have to widen your Im uh, Im imagination, widen your scale of looking at the things, identify what is the behavior of that company, uh, whether this particular company symbolizes with your own retrospective report, whether your in individual uh, personality matches with that company, whether uh, that company communication is in a righteous manner with, with respect to your own personality. So I left uh, uh, accent, uh, what you call, uh, Asochan. It was a semi-government organization. I left Fiki. All these companies are the dream companies, but I was stuck in a bad team. I switched the team, but then, then I realized it is not going well with my communication because I want to project myself as a, as a personality, not, uh, not the company or anything else. So, because I know today the gestation period for success is 10 years initially. And by the time you touch 40, you should start uh, looking out for opportunities to practically establish yourself. So you have to have a second stream of income. You can never survive for 60 years uh, without getting uh, your back hit so multiple times. That makes you arrogant. That is why the, this is one of the reasons that keep on uh, killing other uh, colleagues' skills. And then you think, because I have to survive six years, don't survive, thrive. Look out for more options, more earning opportunities for yourself. And this is one of the reasons which will make you stay humble and which will make you more practical towards life. And this will also give you more opportunities to while work and also run your own business. So this is the result of the entrepreneurial journey. Uh, as a founder, you have to hire a good team. And that good team has to show leadership skills to manage the resources. And that resources have to be communicated well in terms of public information, private information, intellectual properties to create more possibilities. This is going to create a creative environment for the entire group of companies, wherever you're working. So even today, if you are getting an opportunity to join a startup or a big company, all, it all depends upon your life cycle. So everything comes back to life cycle game. So today, you have to find your ability, find motivation, and find opportunities which will motivate you and motivate you to increase your ability and keep on increasing your capability to earn more and more money in the future. Have questions? I'm happy to answer. I speak three languages. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you, Mr. Tarshan. Uh, students, you can now uh, unmute yourselves and ask questions, if any. And uh, you can even put in chat so that uh, I can read it out to him and Mr. Tarshan can answer your questions. I do have one question to you, uh, sir. Yes. Yeah. So while you were talking about, you know, uh, one thing that uh, struck chords with me is how can, uh, you know, how can students uh, steer the interview according to them? So uh, let's say they are sitting in a placement interview or even if uh, they are uh, going out and uh, planning their switch, how do they steer the conversation? How do they make the HR ask them better questions so that the interview is, uh, you know, uh, working for them? Sure. So what is, what do you think that is the best question and hiring manager should ask uh, to the candidate? Uh, I think every, 
the first question that uh, comes up in most interviews is tell me about yourself and uh, mm-hmm. yeah that uh, i think that that is one question where i have i still have control about how to talk and how to take it in a direction uh, but you know questions on strengths questions on my personal skills etc would work for me of course so uh, in 99% of the interviews it everything starts with please introduce yourself yeah right and when somebody asks you please introduce yourself it is an opportunity for you to end the sentence with a question which will enable the second question of for example uh once you have introduced yourself in the end you can say i have also been a part of the ngo i will be happy to share more insights about i how i performed in ngo to scale up their operations in from one city to five cities and then uh, the interviewer is bound to actually ask you that question about the ngo yeah. so this is the way you are steering your conversation and then you can actually keep on ending your conversation with a question so that you can guide the interview this is the reason why there is a difference between uh, so a lot of people have seen youtube videos how to crack an interview but none of the players actually give you a, a real picture what happens in the interview round uh, one of my friends who got selected in the ies examinations he was asked two questions one question question number one uh, so he, he uh, we worked together on a, on a book called bolt vocabulary learning techniques okay. right and uh, so i i told him to actually whenever you're going for an interview just carry that shirt which carries a bolt logo right so that actually tri- tricked that that gentleman we and this person so his name is nishek who got selected in the ies batch uh, in 2017 and his questions were uh, please oh, you are ca- you are carrying a shirt which is volt why are you wearing a shirt are you branding yourself in this comp- uh, in this during the interview it all started that way so you have to project what personality you personality do you have similarly following up in terms of uh, the interview what he in the interview what he wants to listen is very important at this point of time so every interview personality has to be assessed properly also very important always assess your surroundings the most important uh, aspect for any interview round is you are going for an interview round in their premises let's say in a choice number 1 assess see go for a glass of water go for a cup of tea and then go for an interview round if you are too nervous is by natural your body starts sweating and your performance is weakened on the other side if you are getting interviewed over the skype call zoom call and sure the proper lighting is there so that that person can see you properly because one smile can make a hell lot of difference an intelligent man without smile can never thrive in the practical world thank you so uh i think i do i also have one question that uh, our students uh, might also have mm-hmm. uh, so as a fresher uh, as a student with uh, relatively very low experience or no experience at all how do somebody so particularly in terms of covid 19 graduates of 2020 and 2021 will see a lot of effect in you know hiring and all so how do those freshers build their network on linkedin or you know how do they uh, actually build their career okay you have to evaluate that what are the options available uh in 2008 right when there was a recession uh in 2014 uh, to in 2012 uh, whosoever listed for example all these companies whatsapp facebook all these companies who emerged during that period of time they are the billion dollar companies so if you are part of that group uh you you're f- far better than others so metro swiggy all these companies actually are the result of the recession technically uh so similarly when uh, we are evaluating this scenario we are also assessing there will be a technology companies who are going to get the benefit for example zoom call similarly there are going to be apps which are going to create more conducive uh, what you call uh, conducive environment for all the employees to keep stay connected there will be a huge jump in the telecom sector medical sector 
transportation, transportation in terms of cargo, which is uh, 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 very much different from the personal travels, like Air Vistara, all these guys are, are, are called personal travelers, but on the other side, cargo, uh, planes, DHL, Safe Express, all these companies will start hiring uh, more people. So uh, students have to actually go and reach out to these companies where there's a huge potential of hiring. That is what I say. Uh, assess the hiring manager, whether he can, she can hire one person or a 20 person. So you have to block that 20% uh, criteria. So if you apply uh, for a job where the company has 20 uh, openings, you will, there are high chances of getting through the interview round versus when there is a one uh, opportunity only. So in the initial stages, always open your options, find the niche and then enter. Great. Uh, so we have a question from the students. Uh, Supraj is asking in an interview, if uh, the interviewer asks, how do you see yourself as a person? Uh, what, what are your qualities? Uh, should the interviewee, the candidate answer only about the good qualities or should also speak about both good and co uh, bad qualities of themselves? See, uh, never tell your bad qualities ever <laughs> to anybody because uh, it's, it's a human nature. The moment they know your bad qualities, they will look, they will make up their mind. So never go with the YouTube sessions or any other sessions. Always, always use words which are lightweight in terms of talking about your bad qualities. So for example, and never, also never underestimate the intelligence of the hiring manager because he's looking, he's listening to your words. One simple answer to this is, while you have spoken about your good qualities, the moment your time has arrived to, to reveal your bad qualities, tell them how you have overcome those bad qualities at this point of time. So you have to tell the bad qualities which you have overcome. This will uh, practically answer the question uh, he or she is asking. Yeah. We have another question from Janvi. How can we differentiate a good team with a good company? Because a company is built good that, uh, you know, a company which is built good is because it is working with a good team. No, it's a big no. Okay. Uh, when you join a company, there is a marketing team, finance team, IT team, HR team, and so on. HR team is responsible for hiring you, right? And you are responsible, whether you're part of the HR team uh, or let's say finance team or marketing team, then you become a part of that team and your team performance is evaluated. Let's say, for example, you have joined a sales team. So better the sales team, better the company's revenue. Inferior the sales team, better the marketing team, doesn't work. So here the situation is that Individually, teams have to perform and, and you have to practically understand which team I want to join. Let's say, uh, let's pick one uh, case of Google. You want to join a Google, right? Practically, you can join a Google at any point of time. Go join their call center. It's a Google. But, but then, you, then people will question, oh, no, I don't want to work in a call center. Oh, they will pay you double the salary as compared to the management training because that is a routine job it is there is no opportunity to learn more so and then the gestation period is only for two years and after two years you will be thrown out you will be replaced for with another uh, cheaper version of, of of somebody else so a team matters in every company you have to evaluate which team is performing uh, there are so many options which are available today for example you can search for Glassdoor. You can search for Crunchbase. You can also go for Google reviews. You can also write a message to, uh, to these people who have recently left an organization on the LinkedIn. And you can simply throw a question. If they respond well, uh, you can keep on adding the score uh, that, okay, if these people are talking good things about their previous company, add one score. It's a good company or a good team to join. If you think that that person is not responding, even after looking at your message, that means this person has left the organization, maybe because of so many reasons. So possibly negative mark because he might not be happy uh, with this previous company because trust me one thing, 
even if somebody is so busy in his life, the reason why they have opened an account on the LinkedIn because they have time. It all depends upon when they will respond. Yeah, understood. And from what I can take away is uh, researching a lot about the company and the sector that we are trying to join, and uh, uh, researching a lot on LinkedIn about the kind of uh, you know uh, if we are aiming for a career track. Our students have career tracks. If they are aiming for a career track, uh, looking at people who are working in similar career tracks and seeking advice from them would help. Uh, yeah. Did I? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We do have a last uh, question. Uh, uh, I mean, after that, we can sh uh, conclude the session. There is a, a question from Tanya with saying, in blue leadership, how can selflessness and seeking challenges come together? Uh, her question is that if we seek challenges, we also have to compete with the situations and compete with others. So how can this be combined with selflessness? Okay. Selflessness in practical sense. Selflessness is that you give an opportunity for others to grow, which te technically will enable you to grow together. So for example, once you will become a leader, let's say you have an opportunity to take care of your subordinates. And if you give them credit, instead of saying, I did it, right? You say that, okay, please do it. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to grow, right? And join other teams, let's say. Uh, this becomes selflessness group. And people like these companies. So one of my, one of my uh, team members left Boeing to join uh, my team. Uh, one of the team members left uh, MCX exchange to join. So he was a, a chief regulatory officer there. He left the company to join a startup. Uh, and my startup uh, consists of four people, let's say, uh, four team, which is a leadership team. And all these are smart players. And their job is simple, one simple thing, make other people empowerful. So here, if their team is performing, they are growing. Nobody's judging them. But question here is, whether you are at the dependent stage or the independent stage, your selflessness comes into picture. When there is, uh, if you are being beaten like anything, then don't do, don't follow that thing. Compete. But once you are done in, and then you have scaled up at the independence level, right? Then you start the selflessness and push other people to give you more returns. So that becomes your return on investment. Right. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, we do have. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm trying to wrap this session up. Uh, there is a last question, but mm -hmm. uh, students in case, before I uh, speak out that question, um, sir, I'm asking you to accept any requests that come uh, from our students. Your oh, LinkedIn definitely. ID is uh, shared with all of them. If you guys have any more questions, you want to uh, uh, send those questions, uh, you can connect with Mr. Tarshan Chen. And whenever he has time and according to his convenience, he can reply to you. Uh, uh, sir, uh, one more question. The last one, uh, Suprav is asking that in the beginning you have mentioned to talk with the person working in the company to know more about working there. But if the company has many perks, uh, simultaneously it is very hectic. Uh, that person might find it okay. But if it's not okay for me, should I move on in going to a different company or should I take that risk in joining that company? Okay, it all depends upon your risk appetite. Uh, retrospection will actually help you whether you are an easy going person or a dynamic person. So if you if you like an easy jobs, which will give you a job security, right? Uh, low salary, job security. Uh, so better, higher the risk, higher the return. Uh, it will uh, help you to actually uh, channelize your career path. So it's always every job has a life cycle. It all depends upon when it is ending and whether you are stuck at the end stage or the start stage. So if you're getting good perks in a company, it all depends upon what is the definition of that perk. If you are evaluating perk is equal to the money or the job security or the aspiration to do and innovate and keep on adding value for that company so that you can increase the expected return on the invested. Uh, amount to you. So for example, your, let's say your salary is uh, one crore and a company is getting return on investment of uh, by putting, by giving you one crore, the return on investment is five crore. They are better off 
they will love to give you more opportunities. But if your salary is, let's say, 10 lakhs, but the cost to the company is like, is coming out to be like really high, there is no return on investment, company will try to replace you with other options. So it all depends upon your risk assessment. Understood, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, I think everybody here is also thanking you for that. Uh, there are people who are saying that this session was helpful to me. Uh, sure. Thank yeah. you so much. It was very insightful for me personally. Uh, uh, from all of FIB, uh, thank you for taking out your time. Pleasure. And, and uh, please accept the request, if any, that comes your way from our students. Yeah. Definitely. I have already started accepting. Yeah, great, great. Uh, I'll be ending this session for everyone. Uh, thank you. Stay safe. Stay at home. Thank you very much for attending and this session. Yeah. Help each other then. Yeah. <laughs> okay, bye. Yeah, bye.